Hello, I'm Jill Clark, former England international badminton player and now commentator for our dynamic and globally popular sport. This week, as we celebrate our 300th edition of Badminton Unlimited, I have something special for you. The story of badminton. It's believed that it all began about 2,500 years ago. While it's uncertain exactly how the shuttlecock came into existence, there are records of children in China playing with a similar looking toy. It had feathers attached to a base and they'd kick it around for hours. This game was called Ti Zianzi, dating back to the 5th century BC. Still played today, it is now known as Jianzi in China or Chapte around other parts of Asia. Historically, the shuttlecock was made of feathers with rubber or cork attached to the base. Unlike in China, where the shuttlecocks were kicked, in Europe the game involved hitting it with wooden paddles and later on with especially made rackets called battle doors. Ancient Greece has been one of the originators for battle door and shuttlecock some 2,000 years ago. By the 17th century, Le Jeu du Voulant, exactly translated to the flying game, had become an aristocratic pastime. Those are the different stories around the origins of the traditional game, better known as battle door and shuttlecock. Here is what we know for sure. Badminton evolved from this ancient pastime. Yeah, I think the game evolved from um, Batador and Shuttlecock. And it's said that um, somebody had the bright idea of stringing some uh, string across the hall in Badminton. And instead of Batador and Shuttlecock is just playing the shuttle backwards and forwards and hitting it to one another, um, you start to, when you put the string across, you start to hit the shuttle down and it becomes more competitive. And that's where I believe uh, the badminton started. The earliest documented reference to badminton was in 1863 in England. The Cornhill magazine describes badminton as battledore and shuttlecock played on sides with a string used to cut across the middle. Through modern technology of being able to go on to newspaper.com, we've discovered this article called The Life in the Country House was published in the Tumans Exeter Flying Post. And this establishes that Bampton was called Babington in 1863. And it's published in this uh, Cornhill magazine book. And it says that um, if the weather be such to as induce you to remain within doors, your cooperation will be sought for a game of pool, comma, badminton, which is battador and shuttlecock played with sides across a string suspended some five feet from the ground or similar amusements. Sometime in the second half of the 1800s, a similar game was gaining popularity in India. We have a picture here of badminton being played in Simla in India. This is 1864 and you can see that it's a normal court as well, been marked out and uh, they're playing with quite large shuttlecocks as well. That's the earliest photograph we have of badminton being played in India. Um, this is another photograph of badminton being played in 1867 in India. Well, you can see from that photograph there, in 1864, they were certainly using a net. Um, it's slightly higher than five foot, but you can see they were using a net there. And again, in 1867, uh, they were using a net there. 
This is a photograph of Bumpton being played in Bashar in India in 1874. Um, you can see that the courts, it's well played because the courts are worn out, the grass is worn out there. Evident through various texts and images, a game involving rackets and shuttlecocks with a net dividing the sides was popular among British officers in the city of Pune. In fact, this game came to be called Pune after the Indian city. Some believe the Pune game was where it all began. But as far as the history goes and all that, I mean, where it started, as everybody probably knows, that it started some, somewhere in Pune, so they say. The game originated in India, uh, went back to England, got modified and uh, probably has uh, become one of the most uh, popular uh, sports in the country now. For me, of course, Pune uh, is the name which we come. It was played by the Britishers when they were in here. That's the, that's the general uh, this thing. It started in Pune by some Brit Britishers and the soldiers who used to play. And there's a county called Badminton back in uh, England and that's where its name come from. The Pune game was likely born at the Karaki Barracks in Pune, where officers in the British Army played the sport. The history of the Pune club also dates back to the 1860s and was used by the military garrison stationed in the city. The sport was also played here. Pune Clubhouse and Library were unfortunately destroyed by a devastating fire in August 1945 and with it any recorded evidence of its association with the sport. However, based on pictures that were being sent back to England, we can only imagine scenes like this. India in the late 19th century. Men and women serving the British Empire enjoying a game of Pune or badminton. Regardless of what it was called, what is undisputable is India's historical contribution to the popularity of the sport. We know that for a fact that the game was started in Bampton House in, in 1863, but it wasn't very popular in this country for the next, probably the next 10 years, it wasn't popular. Um, it didn't grow very much at all, but it was taken, I believe, by army officers to India, and there it became extremely popular. We know with the, the, um, the civil service people who were uh, out there, it became really popular. And then in about 1873, it started to come back to this country and people in the paper were talking about this new game of Bamson. Um, but it already been invented 10 years prior, but it, it certainly became more popular from 1873. There were many variants of the game being played involving different types of court markings, net sizes, and the scoring system. By the early 1870s, the sport started to formalize, and in 1873, Major Forbes submitted a pamphlet published in Calcutta, which marked the first set of rules. But the rules of badminton, which is Pune game, were formed in India only. In Pune, in Calcutta, Sialkot, then Chennai, everywhere the rules were formed. In Nagpur also the rules were formed. Likewise, that got amended every time. The size of the court was truncated in the center where you put the poles and net to open the doors to entry in the hall. The door should not obstruct the game. The game was played outside also, open air. But nowadays it is played in the hall. My understanding is the game was 
the game of badminton was played in Pune and in these military buildings and they only had one entrance and the entrance was in the side of the building and uh, that's why the, the, the net had to be reduced so people could get in and out of the hall. That's one theory. The sport continued to grow and saw a boon when British army officers and civil servants who played the game returned home. The reason why so many of them moved to the south of England to places such as Southsea and Bath was because it was warmer and they could continue playing outdoors. Um, well, th there weren't, in those days, there weren't many halls to play the game. So that's why I believe in 1863, the game wasn't very popular here because there, was, there, were, there were very few halls for it to play. So it had to be played outside and it couldn't be played very often because of the wind and the, and, and the cold weather. Um, so, but it was slightly different in India. I think that it was played mainly outside in India when you, all the photographs that we've, we've seen um, are people playing outside. Time for a quick break, and when we come back, the story of how badminton got its name. Welcome back to our 300th episode of Badminton Unlimited, where we're looking at the story of badminton. Just to recap, the roots of the sport can be traced back to ancient Greece, China and India, and it developed from the sport of battledore and shuttlecock. So how did the name badminton come about? A lot of people don't realise, especially in this country as well, don't realise that the game, or the name of the game, came from Bampton House. Uh, the 8th Duke had uh, daughters that played Batador and Shuttlecock, we know that. And also, um, the, their, the sons of the 8th Duke were in the Indian Army, so that could have been a way that uh, the game of Bampton, as it was discovered in 1863, was taken back to India. Badminton takes its name from Badminton House. While it was referred to as the new game of badminton in 1873, like we said, the first documentation of the game Badminton was published in 1863, and all corresponding evidence states that the game was already referred to as Badminton. What actually happened is somebody uh, wrote in the field magazine and said, what's happened to the old game of Badminton? And the field magazine eventually made it to India and people wrote back. Uh, there was a letter written back home from the wife of the then Indian Foreign Secretary, the wife of the Foreign Secretary, uh, she says in the letter, Bampton mad here, making bats is quite a trade, and she says that it's very difficult to make the shuttlecocks here. This is an Indian racket made by Jensat G and Sons, CR Coat, Punjab from the late 1800s. Um, it's a one-piece racket that's bent round and then there's a wedge piece put in there and then it has a racket handle there in leather or chamois. Here's something else that's interesting the dimensions of the hall in Badminton House closely resemble the court measurements that we see being used in the sport of badminton today. We've measured the hall and it's basically the same size as the court as we know it now. 
before the Bampton Association was formed, Bampton clubs in this country certainly just used the size available. There was a court in Elin Baths that was 60 feet by 30 feet and uh, when people came to play there, of course they struggled because the court was twice the size and then the people when the Chameleon Bath went to play in a normal court, they would struggle as well. Badminton clubs began to develop in England in the 1870s and 80s and it was Selsey and Bath that were the oldest clubs. So with the sport becoming competitive and in order to regulate it, the first National Babington Association was formed here in England in 1893. This is the framed picture of the start of the Babington Association in 1893 and Colonel Toby uh, put an advert in the Field magazine inviting all clubs to attend on September in 1893 and in the end nine clubs turned up and they agreed to start the Bampton Association and they also formed the first official rules of the game which are very similar to the rules today. Colonel Toby was the, 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 he was the first president uh, secretary, treasurer of the Bampton Association and he was the one who actually got it going. George William Vidal and he was uh, an instigator of composing the rules in India. He was a British civil servant there and he eventually moved back to England and he became the uh, secretary of the Bampton Association in England. Um, from 1899 to about 1907. I believe that that was a major change in the, the game of Bampton for the first, from 1863 until 1893, there were no rules, no regulations at all. Uh, and clubs just simply played friendlies in the country. And this was a major change. And that Bampton Association then um, sort of organized Bampton in the world until uh, 1934 when the IBF, the International Bampton Federation, was formed. So I think that actually starting the association in 1893 was really the major thing in Bampton. It's when it started to grow, uh, be promoted. of the Big Bang of Babington took place in 1898. Mr Percy Buckley, secretary of the Guildford Babington Club, organised the first ever open doubles badminton tournament. The Guildford tournament was the first open tournament in 1898. Because of its success, the Babington Association organised its first event the following year, including the two singles competitions to the doubles. In 1898, the first open tournament was played at Guildford. Um, when I say open, this is where people from other clubs were allowed to play there. And it was so popular, this tournament, that the next year the Bampton Association ran their own tournament. For the first few years, it was called the Association Tournament. And then it was called the All England. Um, and one of the major things about the promotion and why lots of clubs wanted to join was because of the All England Bampton Championships. You see the, the number of clubs vastly increased as soon as the All England started. My first interest in, in uh, the history of Bampton was when somebody sent me a photograph of the 1904 All England and it is the first photograph of the All England. Um, but on the history side, it was when somebody sent this uh, 1904 uh, All England the, and I got interested in the history and then eventually I joined the museum and have been involved in the Bampton Museum for the last 19 years or so. This one here 
is of a house in Shaldon, in Timmouth, in Devon. And this is the house where the first All England champion lived. And we believe because they could practice badminton outside, this is why the, the Devon girls were so good. There was four of them in the final and they, they never lost a game in the first All England right the way through. And you can see they're particularly good because you can see that they're uh, doing jump smashes here and um, round the head action shots there in their long dresses. Uh, and this is actually Muriel Lucas here, who's actually playing. And um, she was so much stronger, she usually played at the back of the court. Quite a few of the photographs we have where she's playing at the back of the court. And there she is again there at the back of the court. And this guy here is um, Stuart Massey, who was the first uh, All England champion. And this, this chap here is Ralph Nichols, and he is the last Englishman to win the All England. From let's say at the age of 15 when I first won the national junior title, uh, you know, it was always my ambition to win the All England title because you know in those days uh, world championships was not there in the early 70s, Olympics it was not included. So um, All England was like the unofficial world championship, you know, equivalent of Wimbledon in tennis. So whoever won the All England was considered as the unofficial world champion. So everybody, you know, dream, in any badminton player's dream at that time was to win the All England. It was very prestigious. It was known to be one of the prestigious uh, tournaments of the year. In fact, the best. If you won the All England, you were... It's the oldest tournament, the main reason, but it was also considered up to 1977 as the unofficial World Championships. There, there weren't any World Championships. So if you won the All England before that date, you were considered the best player in the world. The first two All England events were called the Badminton Association Tournament and it was considered the unofficial World Badminton Championships until 1977 when the International Badminton Federation launched the official World Championships. This year here in Basel, we celebrate the 25th staging of the Badminton World Championships. It's taken 2,000 years since its origin and more than 150 years since the inception as a sport to get to where we are today. The second highest participation sport in the world with a truly global following at the elite level. What a fascinating and glorious journey for the sport I love. Until the next time, Bye-bye.